Get a free trial and 10% off from today's sponsor at squarespace.com forward slash forge. For the last seven or so years, I have been using gas forges, both propane and natural gas. But before I was hooked on gas forges, I was quite the fan of a coke forge. And so today, after not having had a coke forge for over half a decade, I want to make myself a nice compact one for the days where the coke forge really is the only option. We've got the frame welded up. Let's talk about some of the differences between coke and gas forges. What even is coke? If you remember our video from visiting the Tata Steel Factory, we referenced coke as the fuel that they use to make iron. Coke? Co coke. When you take coal and you cook it, you get to burn off all of the sulfur and you get left with a very pure carbon fuel that is known coke. So it's a very clean burning form of coal. And why we like it is because it gets really, really hot. In the gas forge, I can get steel, a bright yellow, close to a white. In a coke forge, I can literally burn the steel. It gets that hot. And that's exactly why I want a coke forge here. I want to be able to have isolated, very, very hot heats for a little video idea I've got. A gas forge makes an enormous wide heat, so heating up very specific areas is quite difficult. And though it's fine for forge welding Damascus, you can run up to some limitations with other projects. So now, Let's work out where we contain the fire. Now there's two main types, a side blast and a bottom blast. In order for the coke to burn, you need to have a continuous air supply in with a blower. And in the side blast, it comes from the side, you end up with a really nice hot spot here, and then you work your steel right there at the top of the coke. And the pipe through which the air blows is called a tuyere, which is the same word they use for the massive copper water-cooled pipes that are pumping in gases into the blast furnace at Tata Steel. It all comes around in one big circle. Now the other type of forge, the bottom blast, has the air being blown in from the bottom and includes a fire pot. That's the fire pot. So you have one little localized area of hot cokes and the bottom blast always used to be my personal preference. Here in the UK, you would see a lot more side blast forges. That's a lot more common and popular here. But in America, the bottom blasts are everywhere. So this is our very small little fire pot for our baby little coke forge. Now as you can see, we need a pipe that goes down beneath it that is going to form our ash dump and it's also going to allow air from the blower to come up into the hot cokes. Now I don't have the right size of square tube, so I think we're going to have to cut up some rectangular tube to make it into square tube. So obviously, if I was to put some coke in here, it would just fall through. It would fall right through. So what we need is what's called a clinker breaker, which stops the coke falling through and allows us to break up the slag and impurities that form into what we call clinker. It is a square that pivots. It's gonna sit in here and it's gonna be able to rock back and forth. Clinker breaker. 
So the basic fire pot assembly is put together, apart from the fact that there's no way for air to get in. We've got some pipes. They're smaller in diameter than I'd like. They're two inch pipes. I'd much rather have a three inch pipe. The saving grace for this project, however, is that it's a tiny fire pot, one, and I've got a really powerful blower on the way to arrive today. So even though we're gonna restrict the airflow a lot with the small pipe diameter, I think we're going to be okay. So in order to get air into the forge, we need one of these pipes to be connected to our ash dump with an appropriately sized hole. But I also wanna use the rest of these pipes to make a valve, a gate valve, so that we can regulate the amount of flow, because sometimes you wanna have very little air coming in. Sometimes you want so much air, you blow that coke to the ceiling. So we have a very quick and a very dirty homemade gate valve and this fire pot is basically done. We just got to get it mounted. Wait, Jamie, mm -hmm. uh, why are you wearing a biking helmet? We have found that Jamie is a significantly faster driver than me. I've got a motorsport mustache, that's why. Yeah. You know, that is quite a speedy mustache. So all this stuff is in loose. I don't even have any need to weld it down. It can stay loose, which is handy if you ever want to transport the forge or these things get rusted out. And that is something that I learned from Prime Brazil about his forges. And considering I want this to be ultra light and portable, I'm very happy that we could get it done with this thin sheet. And so now the final, I think, step is getting our blower attached to it. This is a bouncy castle blower. They are unfortunately quite loud, but they put out a really good amount of air. And I always found that this is about the cheapest way to get an adequate blower for a Coke forge. You pick them up on Amazon. I think I paid about 50 quid for it. And on Amazon, I also picked up this, a little bit of air ducting, aluminium. We'll basically just find a way to duct tape this to that and this to the forge. We're done. And in perfect timing, because Jamie has just showed up with our Coke. He went to the dealer this morning. It actually looks like Coke. Ooh! It's been a long time since I've lit a Coke forge. Let's see if I remember how. Oh, it's so portable. I don't even have a scoop, I've got a dog bowl. If I didn't have this dog bowl, I'd have to use my debit card. Now, it's been a while, so I can't speak from the biggest point of authority. <laughs> <laughs> but this Coke is very moist. It's also just always very hard to light. So you want to be very careful, nice wood base, uh, big wood base to your fire before you even start trying to put the Coke on it. You've got to steam off all that liquid before it's any use to burn. So you've got to really get that heat going in there. I'm going to now try, put a little air through it get this wood burning a little hotter. There we go. That's what I'm talking about. I don't have a rake. Who doesn't have a rake? What blacksmith doesn't have a rake? Now, I know it's an expression that all the cool kids are throwing around these days, but I think that this forge is lit. 
let's heat some steel. So in a second here, you're about to see some sparks start coming up out of the fire, and that's gonna be the steel actually burning. There we go. See these little tiny sparks popping up right here? That's the steel burning. This is what I was talking about, about this fire being so much hotter than a gas forge. And you see, if we take this out, that is burning and molten steel. We don't get that in a gas forge, but we can in a coke forge. We say we do a little forging, Jamie. Now, I found one problem. I don't have a rake, so I'm going to make a rake. I have a rake. It will rake things. And now, I get to show you the one downside to coke. Well, a downside to coke. You see right now, this fire looks very dirty. Well, though it's a very pure form of carbon and it's quite a clean fuel, it still produces that clinker I was talking about. And so, as it stands right now, the fire pot is all clinker and ash. Have a look at this. That right there at the tip of the rake, clinker. But our clinker breaker is useful because while we're forging, we can do that. And you imagine the hot coals all stayed in the top. You can clear out the bottom of the fire while you're going and hopefully not have such a dirty mess. You would then typically have a steel bucket underneath it so that you could dump the ash and clinkers out. I'm so happy to have a coke forge once again. It's going to be very exciting. Well, this episode has been brought to you with the sponsorship of Squarespace, my absolute favorite online website building platform that allows absolutely anybody to build a beautiful website incredibly inexpensively. You don't need an education in computer programming or coding. It's incredibly simple to use. Drag and drop features allow you to build a website that works perfectly from mobiles to computers thanks to the countless themes that they have available for you to pick and choose from to get your website styling just right. I've been a Squarespace customer for years. I've used it with my blacksmithing business as well as with my new side business in dog training, and I love the countless ways you can interact with your clients through it. You can sell paywall access members only content with Squarespace member areas. You can book clients using Squarespace scheduling, sell unlimited physical or digital products, and you can even use their extensions to connect your site to a verified third party print on demand service so you can provide that sweet, sweet merch. So please get started today building your website at squarespace.com forward slash forge. You'll get a free trial, and then using code forge at checkout will get you 10% off your first purchase. And that discount even works on your new domain name. Thank you so much for watching this video. Bye-bye.